All right, what's up, guys? So we do have some questions going on in the chats right now. And uh, there was a question that was asked saying, um, when is it or what's the difference between taking partials and moving your stop loss from negative to break even? OK, so I'm going to go ahead and just draw up a setup real quick. This is the head and the shoulder. Now, we know just based off of what we've been learning off of the head and shoulder. I want to go ahead and take some sales off of this area with my stop loss at the high. Right. I know this is what we've been learning. This is what oren has been teaching me. Right. And this is what I'm going to stay consistent with. Now. Now, the, the difference between moving your stop loss to break even and taking partials is this. Right. Anytime I get a setup. I'm always keeping it basic. Like, honestly, I've, I've learned to keep it basic because going advanced, um, the market doesn't always have to do what you want. Like, just because you want it to continue down, it doesn't always have to. Sometimes it can give you that one to three and then just dip on out of there. Or it can give you what you want and then dip on out of there. But at the end of the day, guys, like, there's multiple setups. You, you're going to have more chances to catch the plays. Just take the money that you're that you're catching and, and get out. One to threes, solid guys. Get what you can get and get out. Um, so I keep it simple. You know, I, I've learned to keep it simple. So anytime I, I know where I want to enter my trade or my stop loss is, I'm gonna move my um my risk management tool to one to one. So you can see I'm now um at a one to one risk reward. What I'm risking is now pretty much what I you know, gaining in profit about $10 risk for a $10 profit. I'm going to go ahead and put my first line there. And this is my partial, uh, my, my break even zone. Break, <laughs> break even. Awesome. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull my risk reward down tool to a one to two. Now you can see um, I would be risking about 10 for a profit of 20, right? That gets a little bit sweeter. So I'm going to put my second line here, and this is going to be my partial area. Come on, my boy. Oops. And then pull it down to a one to three. Now, as soon as it gets to a one to three, guys, I should be already out of my trade, right? But I like to keep it simple like this, guys. I know I've, I've you know, I've jumped off, uh, I've jumped across a couple educators inside the platform and I've, uh, most of them keep it simple like this, right? So if 60 to 85% of the educators are keeping their risk to reward and uh, risk management simple like this, I'm going to keep it simple like this too. I'm not going to try to reinvent the wheel. You know what I'm saying? If, if people are already having success with it might as well you know hop in line and, and and get some myself you feel me so when the market wants to go ahead give me my entry now as soon as it touches this area guys at my break even boom i am now going to move my stop loss from negative to break even so now whatever i'm risking it's it's now a risk-free trade because the market has already gone my direction. Give me a two if that makes sense. Why is this the break-even zone? Because this is my one-to-one. -one. So any anything where I, wherever I enter or my stop losses, that that's what gives me my one-to-one -one zone. So let's just say I was going off the starting point, right? Let's just say the starting point was right here. My entry is there and the stop loss is still at the high. Well, if my entry is there and my stop loss is there, where's my one to one? Boom. One to one. Does that make sense, Steve? Awesome. What's up, Josue? Right. So as soon as it hits my break even, guys, I'm moving. I'm adjusting into Trey Locker or, or an MT5, MT4, right? I'm I'm moving my stop loss from the negative and I'm adjusting it to my entry numbers. 
right? This is going to allow me to preserve capital, right? So if the market, this guy, <laughs> so when the market wants to go ahead and reverse, hey, it's okay, right? It's all good. That saved you because what can happen is it can obviously continue going higher, right? Now, if the market continues to drop down, continues to drop down, and we get a partial zone, boom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my MT4, MT5, or meta uh, trading uh, trade locker, and I'm going to go ahead and take some partials off. Now, it's a lot easier, and uh, trade locker, I love trade locker, bro. Give me a five for trade locker. Who likes trade locker? I, I love, love it, bro. I'm sorry, but I, I'm a trade locker fan, bro. I'm I'm hopping off the off, off the MT4, MT5 bandwagon. I'm over that shit, bro. I'm over it. I I, I like a uh, trade locker. What's up, Josue? You have a question, bro? I'm just seeing that. What's good? Yeah, bro. Yeah, hey, bro. Hey, hey, man. How's it going? Uh, I just wanted to ask you, man. On the um on the like um after our trade hits like the 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 like um uh, like uh the zone of like. The zone of like I'm all 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 of like all partials. How how like how like how like much of your of your actual of your actual like of your 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 like a lot size are you are you taking out? Is it half all the time or is it like a quarter here and then if it's here another other another a quarter um honestly that's up to you bro i i personally okay. just take out half you take out half all just the take out okay. half. yeah okay that's what cool. i like to do okay. um if, if especially if you're looking for swings like if you know yeah, yeah. If you're looking for higher time frame movement like that oh yeah for don't sure. be afraid to, to break it down in quarters you know because okay. okay. the more you the more you can hold and the more it drops yeah. the more you yeah can for make. sure uh, for um, sure. But yeah, with the with the small intraday, a small scalp, something like that, yeah, bro. Yeah. I'm always half? taking out half that. Yeah. Okay. Half for sure, bro. Sounds yeah, good. At, at my partial zone, for sure. It's a good question, bro. Yes. Sir. Um, you said, but Miguel says to use trading view. Trading view on what exactly? To mark up. Okay, so no matter what, right? Even if you mark up on trading view or on levels. You should still mark up in your MT5 or trade locker, no matter what, because the numbers you see on levels or trading view, those numbers are not exact to the point in your account with your broker, right? Give me a five if that makes sense. So no matter what chart you're looking at, even if you're looking at the charts, guys, right? You guys should be going to trading view and find a chart that matches up to your broker's numbers as close as you can possibly get it to, right? Because when you're looking at trading view and you're doing something like this, right? And, and you're trying to mark up and you put a random charts numbers into your trade locker on MT5 and, and you didn't even look at your broker and it's going to be something like this, like something all crazy like that because it has awkward numbers because the numbers are going to be off. You know, so, you're like, what the heck, you know? So make sure you find charts that line up to your broker as much as possible. Um, for me, I've noticed the brokers that I use, FXCM, those charts, they're not to the point exactly to the T, but they're very, very close. So you guys can try it out. FXCM, I like those charts. Those match my um, broker the best. Um, but yeah, keep in mind that. So yeah, you should, you guys should always be marking up um, inside of your account, inside of your broker. Now it's a lot easier in Trade Locker. I will, I will give you that. That's why I love it so much. On top of the risk, uh, the risk calculator tool that it has, uh, I like that. I I use that a lot. Um, but does this make sense, guys? Regarding break evens and taking partials. Does anybody have any questions? Let me know. I see we have a lot more um, people on the call, guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know what you guys need help on the most right now. Um, you know, I, I've gone over start, the starting point and the head and the shoulders heavily for the past year. Um, and I've gone over stop losses, entries, take profits, a lot of these things, you know, pretty consistently for the past two years. And, you know, I really just want to help you guys out with whatever brick wall you guys are hitting. So 
whether it's entries, whatever it is, guys, if you guys have any questions, let me know what you guys need help on. That way I can help you. And if you guys don't really have questions, well, then we can really just look at um, the moves that happened this week. I hope you guys have questions, though. Let me know. Let me know, guys. This, this, These calls are for you. All right? Take advantage. Yeah. Hey, Vinny, I have something to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically, like, as we have there, like, you could do on your, maybe, is it your left side? If the market violates that area, like, on the right shoulder, uh, so can we, like, make that as our starting point, like, buying upside? Okay, you said, so when the market violates this area, like, goes higher, right? Yeah, yeah yes. What was your next, what, so because what we, after that? Uh, so they are uh, because it violated our uh, previous starting point. No, the, like the the mitigation zone, right? So can we like, from there, if the market comes back and we test that zone, can you consider that as uh, our starting point for, for a buy? In this Somewhere area there? right here, yes, 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 yes. yes you you will see um, a starting point right there, especially when you see a nice clear violation. And it mm. completely breaks and closes above. You will see a, a last selling candle in this area, and yeah, you can definitely take that as a double confirmation um, that the market is going to continue up higher. You know, especially when when we've studied um, the head and shoulder violation uh, yeah. as often as we do, um, mm. you start to trust it pretty pretty good. You know, so when you see something like this and there's a starting point yeah. right here, yeah, for mm. sure, I would I would love to see if we can go ahead and take the starting point. Um, entry, you know, and then we can have triple confirmation, right? Mm -hmm. When the market comes down, as the market comes down, let's just mark that up. Okay. You know, as the as the market comes down, mark up that structure that gets broken. Pull back, mm -hmm. BOS, mark that up. Mm -hmm. BOS, mark that up. Mm -hmm. BOS, BOS, BOS. Now, when the market rejects. Maybe you you should be test trading these zones. No, in my opinion, test trading helps a lot, right? Um, it allows you to be wrong. And as soon as the market gives you what you need to see, you can go ahead and get that heavier lot here and shoot that back up. Okay, understood. Does that, does that make sense? Yes, sir. Thank you. Awesome, awesome bro. Awesome. Yeah. Appreciate you, Jose. Um, appreciate you. I do. Can we look at moves that occurred uh, this upcoming week? Um, that can occur. Yes, that can occur. Yes. When we're done with questions, for sure, I got you. Anybody else? Anybody have any questions? I struggle on how you can identify an actual entry. Can you use an actual, um, uh, actual market for example? Yes, I got you. So, one bro. Um, if you are struggling to to find a, a an entry on your own independently, one like don't kick yourself in the butt too hard. Like that's okay because we all we we all start from the bottom. Um, like we every single one of us in this call, um, someone had to teach us. We all had to learn somewhere. We we don't come out the womb and you know most of us aren't born into families where you're like yo this is what you do on an uptrend and when it comes back to the starting point you 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 know so. If you're having trouble, it's okay. This is where you ask questions. Just make sure you take notes and then apply what you what you learn, right? But again, bro, Xavier, uh, what is it? Xan Xander? Is that what it is, bro? Xander? Um, don't be afraid to use levels, bro. Levels, levels has the sauce, bro. Levels is fire, right? Levels is fire now. The one thing that we like to, to focus on when it comes to levels is structure, right? Structure. Is the market in a downtrend? Because if the market is going down, got you, right? When the market is going down, Xander, we want to go ahead and look for sales, right? Now, when the market is heading up, we want to go ahead and look for buys, Right. So this right here, bro, is literally half of the battle. I promise you, like people, this is what where people struggle within their first years, understanding that they should be selling as the market's selling. 
<laughs> people's first year, they will try to buy so many times on the market is selling, including myself. Like we all do it. Like we're all learning. We take counter trend trades and do things we're not supposed to. So when the market is selling, bro, let's just continue to look for sales. When the market is buying, let's continue to look for buys. Does that make sense, Xander? Awesome, bro. Awesome. Now, I'm going to go ahead and break down the starting point entry for you because Levels has that built in. If you can't find the entry yourself, if you're struggling to find an entry, Levels can help you find this, right? So let's check me out, right? If we're, Xander, if we're going up, if you see the market going up, what do you think we should be doing? Looking for buys or sells? Buys, awesome. Now, when we see this, bro, when we see this, and this is, it's it's good for us to understand structure, right? I can teach you this and break this down as easy as I can, as easy as, as, as easy as I possibly can for you, right? But if you don't understand structure, if you haven't studied it or take the time to understand it, it's going to be hard for you to, to continue to, like when you watch it on the chart, it's going to be hard, right? Because you need to understand structure in order to do this, right? So when you can see we have BOSs to the upside, when we see markets in an uptrend and we can see BOSs, we know we're in an uptrend, right? BOS stands for break of structure. And when we see break of structure, you can think of that as trend continuation. And, and that's kind of easy to think about, right, as well, because the market's already uptrending. It's continuing up. Right. So when we see the BOS, we can already think the market's continuing up. Now, the thing about breakage structures, right? We need to find the breakout rally. So we need to have a couple candles that break out of here. We need it to be the same color in a row. Right. The same color in a row. All right, Xander. These candles need to be at least two to three of the same candles in a row. Does that make sense? Awesome. So let's check this out. Me and you today, bro. Market's heading up. Again, it has to break above this black line. So the market's heading up. Market's heading up. Okay. The market starts to pull back. Market pulls back one time. The market's heading up. The market's heading up. The market pulls back again. The market's heading up. Did we finally get our breakout rally, Xander? Did we get this breakout rally? Let me know, bro. Let me know. Yes, we, we got the breakout rally, right? We can see we have three candles that break above this black line. So we get the breakout rally. Now, what we have to do next is once we identify the breakout rally, we need to follow that rally back down to the last selling candle, right? So we have one candle, two candle, three candle, boom, right there. This is the last selling candle before that breakout rally. Does that make sense, bro? And levels will help you find it. Levels will say, hey, Xander, look, check this out. We have a blue arrow right here. So when we see a blue arrow, we can go ahead and press this blue button. And what that's going to do is it's going to go ahead and mark up your starting point for you. And what a starting point is, Xander, it's, it's, Supply and demand, right? It's supply and demand in the market, right? But when you see this, levels will literally help you identify your supply and demand zones in the market, right? So this is going to be your entry to buy, right? So when the market comes back, we're looking to take buys and continue the market. Does that make sense, Ander? Awesome. Now, there's one more thing that we need 
and before we even take this, right? We need to find our stop losses. It's easy to find an entry, but we every entry needs to come with a stop loss. So what we can do is once we find our starting point, Xander, we need to look for the lowest wick in that area. So we'll, we'll just use this one right here to the left. This will be the lowest wick in that area, and that will be my stop loss. Does that make sense, Xander? Give me a one if that makes sense, bro. Awesome. So what we're going to do is we want to enter there with my stop loss at that low. Minimum one to three risk to award. So when the market comes back, we're looking to go ahead and take some buys and continue and continue with that run. Does that make sense, bro? And you could do that over and over again. Anytime you see a break of structure, we're looking for the same exact setup over and over again. Over and over and over again, right? So levels will help you, bro. Levels will help you. So check me out right here. We can see the market starting to head up in this area, right? Now, level is already helping us identify. We have a break of structure right here. And this is what I mean, guys. Like when I first saw levels, like my mind was blown, bro. You're telling me I have an AI scanner helping me look for setups. is helping me mark up charts and I'm not taking full advantage of it. Insane, guys. Trust me. Levels, harmonics, swipe point scalper, auris. If you guys aren't utilizing those, oh my goodness, guys. Oh my goodness. Check me out. Break a structure, right? My, I mean, come on. T. Don't you be disrespecting. No, nah, I'm just kidding. Nah, I mean, levels Levels is my favorite. It's top, top hands down. Um, but honestly, I, I really, really like um, harmonics, especially when you understand um, what they're looking for. And obviously, you don't have to play every setup. You know, it, and when you could put levels and harmonics together, it's free. I mean, we've gone over levels and harmonics multiple times. That's, that's crazy. Levels and harmonics together is crazy. Um, but I like harmonics, the crypto harmonics. I like the scalper and levels. Those are those are my faves. Um, but check me out. Xander, do you see a breakout rally right here, bro? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why starting points are so easy to see because it when we can see structure, higher high, higher low. And markets breaking out with a rally. Oh my goodness. It's like, bro, that's so easy to see, right? Now, what we do is levels has our back. It's letting us know, hey, I can press this right here. And pff, levels gonna have my back. It's gonna mark it up for me. But you're also learning how to find it yourself. So this is what I'm saying. Like, if, if you're struggling to find things yourself, levels will have your back. And that's what I love most about levels. So boom, we can go ahead and mark this up. That's an entry right there. So what I can do is entry on the first touch. My, my lowest wick in that area is right here. Oops. So that's my stop loss with the minimum one to three risk to award. And that one was a TP smacking. Does that make sense, Andrew? Awesome. Same thing right here, back to back. Levels is helping you out, bro. This one was a miss. Obviously, market didn't come back right here in this area. It happens, right? Nothing we can do. But levels is saying, yo, market took off, but we have your back. Don't even trip. Let's see what the market could do in this zone. Boom. Take off. Take off, baby. Take off. Take off, man. RIP take off, bro. The best Migo. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Boom. Another one to three smacked. All right. Another one to three smacked. Now, check me out. EUR, JPY. We can see we have a red arrow here, right? 
I mean, market, it looks like market may be shifting. We're getting higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher lot, higher highs, lower low, right? Now, <clears throat> looks like market shifted. So look at, check me out, Xavier. Boom. We get consolidation. Now, this is the head and shoulder setup, right? Tied in with the starting point. So consolidation. This is the shoulder. The head is the breakout. And then as soon as we change direction, that gives us a head and shoulder. This is my shoulder. This is my head. I need for the market to come back and give me another shoulder. Right now, that's one cell idea we can take with this market structure that you know it's identifying, along with red arrow. If I press the red arrow, boom, it's giving me a supply. So I can also look at this as a sell zone as well with my stop loss at the high. So if market wants to come back within these two zones, I can go ahead and look for some short possibilities. Does that make sense, Xander? And again, a lot of you guys are like, man, this right here, that's a big stop loss. I mean, hey, I mean, I feel you, trust me, but this is what the market is giving me. Right. So when you guys see something with the with the big stop loss like this, you, the trader, have you have to talk to yourself and ask yourself, you know, what and what am I going to do here? You know, because if you use the shoulder, I mean, you're like, God damn, that's a stop loss and a half, bro. I mean, I can see how sway like, no, nah, I ain't taking that, bro. I, I'm going to have to wait up on that one, bro. That's a stop loss and a half, my boy, you know, and I feel you like that's a big stop loss. Don't get me wrong. That's the setup. We can all see the setup. If I pull, pull the BOS, let's see. If I go uh, go to the one hour, let's see if it busts out. Here we go. See, it's literally telling me this is the head right here, right? So we can all identify the setup. But the thing is, this is a huge stop loss. So there's two things we can do right one you can test trade the area now test trade is an under leveraged lot i like to take a fifth of a percent on my test trades 0 0.05 risk to reward so in trade locker you can actually calculate your risk I, i'm at, we're gonna have to do a trade locker call because i feel like a lot of people don't know about this and it's super easy i'm like bro so there's a button in there where you can actually use and adjust your percentage in there. So you're not you're not messing with a dollar amount. Like you're going strictly off of percent. So and what that does is that changes your lot size for you. So it calculates everything that you're willing to risk percent wise and then it calculates your lot size for you. So I like to take 0.05 a fifth of a percent, a very small fraction, right, of my percent. And that's my test rate. So what I would do is as soon as it touches this area, I enter my test trades. Boom, test trade, 0 0.05, right? That's what I do. Vinny, Vinny the trader, Vinny the barber, <laughs> 0 0.05 test trade. This is what I do, guys. I'm not, it's not a 0 0.05 lot size, 0 0.05%, 0 .05%, a fifth, fifth of a percent, right? I'm breaking it down to a fifth. All right, so this is my test trade. Now, what we have to do, once it's inside this area, guys, right? Once it's inside your area, what we have to do is start hopping on a lower time frame inside this area, guys. Right inside this area, what we can do is drop down to our lower time frame, and we're gonna wait for the same exact thing. We're gonna go ahead and wait for the consolidation to build up. Give me a head, give me a change of character, give me that right shoulder, and send it down. And we can go ahead and use this setup right here on that lower time frame.
your stop loss will be much tighter. So your stop loss will look something like this. What's your stop loss at the high? And obviously we can attack some higher time frame targets. Minimum one to three, always. If you're new, attack one to three. If you don't have higher time frame targets, then don't go for higher time frame targets. Stick with one to three. But if you're a vet and, and you know what you're doing and you plan on holding this for a while, right? Go ahead and do what you got to do with that holder time, uh, higher time frame target. But this helps us risk less. So instead of having a stop loss that looks like this, you can have something that looks like this. And this is what you call going from macro to micro, right? So in this area here, this would be my 1% test uh, confirmation trade. 1% confirmation trade. Does that make sense, guys? Right now, drop down to a time frame that you feel comfortable with. This is on the same time frame, right? No, so this can be on a different time frame, right? Once it's in here, once it's inside your zone, what you can do is you can drop down to whatever time frame you feel comfortable, right? Whether it's you're going on the 15 minute, the 30 minute, the the 15, uh, what, the 15, the 30, the five. I wouldn't go anywhere under the five, honestly. Too confusing. Even I get lost. I'll take two or three losses back to back to back, and then I have to get back in. Uh, it, it, there's too many things that happen too quick and a lot of people make mistakes including myself on that one minute time frame right so just wait for the five minute or that 15 right if you get clapped on the five and you start to feel uncomfortable then start going up to the 15 you know if you feel uncomfortable on the 15 just go to the hour wait for the hour trade how it's comfortable for you know make trading comfortable for you guys you know there's no need to make it crazy because you're trying to catch a crazy snipe as long as your stop loss looks a little better than what it originally does shoot you're doing good in my book a plus work baby yes sir a plus work does that make sense guys right because like your four hour pullback can be like way down here right let's just say your four hour pullback is, i'm just going to delete this because that's kind of annoying me right now let's move this over here let's actually just delete that quick Right, let's just say your four hour pullback is here. Now, on the one hour time frame, let's say your one hour time frame pullback is right here. Now, as it goes higher, let's say your five minute pullback is right here. And now the market is, you know, even. Does that make sense, guys? Let me know if that makes sense. Let's, let's change this color real quick. Um, we got to leave it like that, right? So let's say your four hour pullback is way down here. As the market goes higher into the zone, maybe that one hour pullback is a little higher. As the market goes higher in a lower time frame, there's going to be a pullback right here. And as the market is obviously, you know, where it should be, even, you know, we're going to have to take a look and be like, you got to talk with yourself and be like, hey, am I comfortable with taking the five minute change of character? You know, if you're a vet and you've been here for a while, you're probably going to be like, you know what? I think I've learned enough and I can trust what I'm looking at so I can go ahead and take that five minute. Right. If you're someone who's. um, Who's been here for, for a while, intermediate looking to um, start crashing down on time frames right maybe you're like you know what that one hour time frame that's my sweet spot right now so i'm gonna go ahead and, and wait for that change of character off of this one hour time frame and take sales off of this right if you're someone who is you know fairly fairly new right your sweet spot most of the time because it's a lot cleaner market structure it's going to be that four hour time frame and that's okay you know, I did that for a, for my first two years. But I, I love the four hour time frame. I was a four hour, hour time uh, frame menace, bro. Me and the four hour time. I would see Miguel going that one minute. I'm like, bro, one minute, bro. Four hour time frame, baby. You know, I was I just loved the four hour time frame. It was a lot cleaner. Um, 
everything made sense to me. And as I started to develop and I started to get more mature as a trader and I started to learn more things and, you know, I was able to drop time frames and drop time frames until I was able to, you know, feel comfortable in a certain time frame. Like, okay, the five, I feel comfortable here. Any lower, I'm making decisions that I know I shouldn't be making. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, keep that in mind, guys. And 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 we can go ahead and take a look at some uh, um, examples. Let's see if we could find some type of examples like that. Let's go ahead and look at some. Uh, are you guys looking at any pairs for next week exactly? Anything? Anything? Uh, are you guys looking at anything uh, specific? Uh, where the heck is New York? Let's look at ADUSD. USDMXN. What do you have? Send me a chart. I want to see it. Oh my goodness. Oh my mama. Oh my hood. Look at this, Xavier. Xavier, front of the class, my boy. Front of the class. Me and you today, brother. Check me out, Xavier. Check me out. We got a higher high, higher low, higher high. Is that a is this a breakout rally, bro? If you if you're looking at this, would you consider that a breakout rally? Uh, where did Xavier go? All right. Anybody else? Would you guys consider this a breakout rally to the upside? Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Xander. Xander. My apologies, bro. Xander. I'm the worst of names, bro. I'm so sorry. You know what? Shame on me, bro. Shame on me. I'm the worst. Xander, I'm sorry. My apologies, bro. I feel bad right now. But breakout rally right here. Which levels letting me know. Saying, yo, I got your back. Xander. I got your back, Xander. This is a starting point right here. If I extend that over. Boom. Let's see what we got. Along with the shoulder. And then market took off. I don't know if you guys remember. Was is this the one? Um, oh no, it wasn't. But market took off. And this is this is a clean example, right? A super clean example. So check me out, guys. Check me out. So we can see that this is a daily zone. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. So look, we have a daily zone right here. Now, my closest pullback, guys, on the daily time frame, oops, is right here. Right now, in order for me to get into some confirmation trades for buys, market would need to go ahead and break above this, and then I need to go ahead and wait for a pullback and continue up. So I'm, I need to wait for all this to happen in order for me to get another trade in right here, right? I don't want to do that. I don't want to wait for, I want to be able to catch that move. I don't want to miss the move. I want to catch the move. So what do I have to do? I have to drop down and find structure. So boom, on the daily time frame, I couldn't see this, but on the four hour time frame, I can. So we can see market is consolidating here. Let's see. Oh, it's right here. All right. Market's consolidating. Market's consolidating, doing, doing its job. And then the, what happens next, guys? The banks do what the banks do best. They drive price down so they can get a better buy opportunity and then shift the market right back up. And when, as soon as it um, changes direction, let's try to find that starting point.
I'm liking this big this big candle, but let's drop down to that one hour time frame real quick. Dang, you miss it. You miss the play. But it is what it is. On that lower time frame, the starting point's way down here. Right? If you took the break and retest, you're definitely up on that. But a lot of people um, aren't really taking break and retests. But this is the thing, right, guys? Like, if you're focused on one pair, guys, like, being focused on one pair helps so much, right? Because if you're expecting market to come back, somewhere within this range to send it back up wouldn't you want to mark up structure so as the market's pulling back and pulling back and pulling back there's probably going to be some type of structure that's going to allow me to get back in somewhere right so even though we didn't get in here we can possibly get in somewhere in here let's drop down to the five i don't know i'm i'm just you always have to mark up structure, especially if that's the pair that you mark up. Let's see. Nothing too crazy right here, to be honest. Nothing too crazy. I'm seeing a starting point right here and then a starting point right here. Oh, yes, sir. All right, so um, I can see that obviously the market's already left, right, guys? And again, if this is a pair that you're focusing on, in my opinion, guys, when you focus on a small amount of pairs, you start to understand their every move because you they should be marked up, right? Now they're listening to you. When you focus on them and you have everything marked up, you're waiting for things to happen, and now they're listening to you instead of you trying to figure out what they're saying. Instead of you know when you're when you're a girl or your or your or your dude's giving you the silent treatment and you're just like what the what's going on here? And you're now you're overthinking, trying to get into their mind, and you're like what is going on, bro? I I don't even know. But when you have the chart marked up, guys, it actually allows the chart to talk to you because now you're like all right, cool, two could play at that game, sucker, right? Two could play at that game. Shoot, I I could stay quiet because I got things I got to do. Some people got families. Some some got their own businesses. There's things I got to do. So I could stay quiet, chart. Trust me. Now I have two possible buy zones. Right now, let's look at the structure right here. I can see structure on the lower time frame. Let's actually drop down. Let's see if we can... Come on, levels. Levels, do me a solid levels. At least it's going, though. Like, oh, yeah. All right. So check me out. On the five minute, the, the closest pullback, is I, I believe, is way up here. And you don't see none of the structure that is actually happening on this one minute time frame. Right? Boom. We're breaking structure. We're continuing to break structure to the downside. Now, I will be honest. When you hop on lower time frames, guys, it will get confusing. With some pairs, you're just like, what in the world? But do your best to mark it up. And you're going to see structure play out. So we can see market is starting to shift, right? Market, and this is what I, the thing about test trading, guys, and you don't never have to be the first one in. You never have to be the first one in. You could just wait and let the market tell you what it wants to do. Market's below our buy zone right now. But as soon as we start shifting up, look it. It already told you, hey, I want to start going now. I want to start going. So look, check me out. 
on the one minute. These are one minute zones, but I like to jump to higher time frames and adjust as well. So there's a buy zone there. And then we break structure here. And this is a clear break of structure. We can see this was a higher high on the one minute, equal highs, and then we break structure. So we also have a starting point right here. And this could have been, if, if market didn't give you an entry within this zone on this pullback, you know, as the market's starting to pull back and come within the zone, obviously on the one minute, it doesn't look like it gives it to you. But if you waited for this structure, boom, you could have been in right there, smacking, right? Smack in. So let's take a look. Let's adjust real quick. We already know we can get on this on the, on the one minute time frame right here. But let's adjust. Can we go to like the two minute? Oh, the three minute. Let's see what we can do on the three minute. Well, I like to jump through time frames. I don't, I do not like to stick on one time frame personally. I'm not a fan of just one time frame because as you go down a time frame, guys, yes, we we tighten we tighten up our buy zones, yes, right? But at the same time, sometimes we're missed, right? Now check me out. We know that the change of character um happened within here. Let me see. Shoot. I wish I would have marked it up. Let me go back real quick, guys. Sorry. I want to make sure I get everything clear for you guys. Where are you at? All right. Uh, break of structure. Yes. Happened here. Okay. Three minute time frame. So we know that, that it already happened on the one minute. Right in our head, we know that the change of character already happened on the one minute. So as we go to the three minute time frame, now we're just looking to widen up our buy zone just a little bit. A lot of people are fans of dropping down to tighten. Honestly, I'm a fan of widening widening just a little bit. I'm a fan. Um, you can experiment. You know, I know Neri. She's a freaking beast. She's an absolute savage at dropping down time frames and getting these minute, tiny, tiny, tiny zones. And she's an absolute sniper with shits, beast, right? But I've I've done a lot of back testing and I realized, you know, just by widening up some zones, you can catch a lot of plays too. A lot of plays, you know, a lot of plays too. So we're up on the three minute time frame. We went up one time frame to see if we can widen our zone. What is that right there? What's that, Austin? I'll look at that right now, bro. Right, so look, check me out. Now where our starting point is this. And now when the market that came back, right? The market that came back and missed us at first, we're in now. Market takes off in that one minute, we're in again. Let's drop back down to the one and we'll slide over that way. Uh, I'll, I'll look at that right now, bro. I got you. Yep. Boom. One minute play. No drawdown. Literally, literally no drawdown. You're in there for a snipe. I don't even know if it went into negative. And the market goes your direction. So we get shoulder, head, change of character. We're able to get a three-minute starting point. Break a structure to the upside. So now we're clearly trending up. Starting point, boom, shifted. We shifted the markets. Shifted the markets, guys. The market, I mean, markets ran, man. Whether you went for the first touch, this was already one to three. Markets ran a one to eight pretty much on that one. If you're looking at this one, this was actually a pretty savage one. Uh, markets ran about a one to 12, but obviously clapped your one to three with easy money. Right, so super fire. We're all about looking at the same thing, guys. Like, nothing changes. Like, no, nothing changes at all. 
What is this right here? I don't see a pair on this, bro. It's over here a little bit. SPX, okay. Does that make sense, guys? Like, no matter what time frame, like, even if we're looking for buys, like, nothing changes. Let's look for our setup. And as long as you know what you're looking for, you understand structure, you understand the starting points, you know, you're going to look, you're going to find some setups. Now, maybe you miss that. Sometimes you miss plays, you know, maybe we didn't get this one. It's okay. But market obviously clearly gives you another opportunity to get back in. And, you know, this was a, a clean opportunity. Not only that, it gives you another one, literally back to back, back to back. Look at this, bro said okay we missed you. you you missed it no worries Teresa I I heard a hey, yo you know words going around Teresa missed the she missed the she missed the buy you know she missed the buy so I'm like all right yo I gotta make some calls yo who who can I call to make the market come back down so the homegirl T can go get it, go ahead and get her entry oh you gotta call junior junior Munoz ah junior we all right Yo, Junior, T, T missed the entry, bro, so we got to go pick her up. Awesome. Let's go ahead and flip it. So then the market makes that U-turn, comes right back up to that starting point, bro, and then it's done. Bro, maybe you missed the first entry. It's okay. It's okay. But it gives you two back-to-back, -back and it's gone. And these these are honestly pretty good trades. I mean, these are these are pretty sick. Yeah, next time you you miss your entry, call Junior. That, that fool got some. He got some uh, capital in his account. He be he be moving the markets. Boom, clean one to three. If you have your stop loss tight underneath the starting point or underneath this low, you still catch the one to three. Simple, simple, simple. Dude, again, again, markets letting you know, yo, hey. We're catching these setups. We're catching these setups. Honestly, guys, you guys don't even know. You guys don't even have to know how to trade a whole lot. And you can still catch setups using levels. Like, you, you really can. As long as you know the rules, like, you really can. Um, You said SPX 500. Um, Honestly, I'm looking for some type of reversal with the indices, too. Um, just because they've already broken highs, and obviously, usually after um, market break structure, there's usually some type of pullback, you know. So, um, we're on the weekly time frame, so you know, usually after market breaks highs, we usually get some type of a pullback, and then we've broken highs. So I'm not sure if we're gonna pull back now and continue, or we're just gonna continue for now, right? So, let's go ahead and, and break that down real quick. Um, we can see this is the weekly time frame. Obviously, market has broken structure. Levels gave us an arrow. If I press the arrow button, dang, look at that, Xander. Whoo! You just got to know how to match colors with colors, bro. And you're up. That's a snipe. But look, check me out. Levels is saying, yo, we got a starting point right here. Awesome. Cool. We'll go down to the daily. Awesome. So now I know my starting point on the daily time frame is actually way down here because the market broke and closed above. And the last red candle is way down here. These are all green candles, right? Not only that, we have a shoulder right here. So I'm excited. You know, I'm excited if the market wants to come back down. This looks like a pretty sick play. This is the daily time frame. So it may take some time. Right, may take a week, may take two, may take a month. I don't know, but you know, when it happens, I will be ready. Right now, check me out. If the market wants to reverse, and we already know, look at check me out. Oh my god, this is where this is where when you start putting structure and everything together, guys, look at this is higher high, higher low, higher high. You guys see that. Now, when the market starts to, uh, to come back and give me that pullback, I would be looking for a rejection to continue my higher high. Does that make sense? Now, that's the structure, right? Higher time frame structure is saying higher high, higher low, higher high. But look at what the internal structure is saying. We got 
shoulder, head, change of character. Everything is lining up to why market would be pulling back to continue up. Right? So I'm liking this. I mean, whenever it wants to come back, I'll be ready. It's all good. You know, but now you're asking for sales, right? So this is what we have to look at. I'm seeing my consolidation. Right? I'm even counting this look over here. Because this is my higher high, my higher low, and then we start to squeeze within that range. We start to squeeze and we start to build liquidity in here. Right? So I'm going to go ahead and pull my change of character line down there because that's my actual low. Right? That's my actual low. Um, now, Oren... If you follow Oren, he likes to change character and sell after the starting point has been broken. Um, excuse me. Um, when market is bullish, especially with indices, I would rather stay patient and wait for the actual low because I've seen it to where, you know, it'll go ahead, break and close. Now we're looking for a sell in this area. And what happens is it just does this because we actually haven't broken the low. Right. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes that does happen. Uh, that does happen, uh, especially with indices. So I, I've learned to just, you know, find my actual low and just wait. And this is where it kind of goes to like, OK, you want to stay silent? I could stay silent, too. And I'm just going to wait and stay patient. Right. Because some point you're going to crack and you're going to break and close below and you're going to tell me everything you need me to know in order to take some sell opportunities. Does that make sense, guys? Let me know. Austin, does that make sense? Yes. Awesome. Appreciate it. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind, guys. Yes. Um, keep that in mind. On the one hour time frame, I mean, I'm just not a I'm just not a big fan, you know. I'm just not a big fan. And if you guys I, I know do. some people go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to ask, are all those wicks under it? Those are all liquidity building up, right? Correct, yeah. This okay, is all that's that's why I was kind of looking for sales because I figured we were going to sweep all that. Yeah, so the thing is, too, is is when I first – don't get me wrong. It's, it's a total possibility, right? And that's how you got to think. You have to think in possibilities because when we think that, okay, that's liquidity, it has to go ahead and sweep it. That's when we're like, okay, we're total, we're in total control. <clears throat> Market's gonna listen to me no matter what I say, right? And that's just not the case. So even though we can identify, thinking possibilities, that is liquidity. It it can sweep the the what's up, bro? It can sweep. So what are we doing next, right? So don't think, oh, just because it's liquidity, market's going to automatically because that, that's what that's what, you know, we have to sweep liquidity. You know, don't think like that. It's good to identify for sure. And the market can sell, but it doesn't always have to. Trust me, I, I've seen it over and over again to where, yeah, it'll take a little bit of liquidity out, you know, and then it'll just continue going up. You know, you, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Awesome, bro. Awesome. And that was like my misconception with like learning um, smart money along with um, levels. I thought when liquidity was built, you want it to be swept. You need it to be swept. Right. But I also learned uh, when the there's there's two types of liquidity, right? There's buy side liquidity and sell side liquidity. Now, when the market is trending up higher, and going, you know, markets uptrending, markets bullish, right? Who continues to repeatedly get taken out, sellers or buyers? And we can end it with this, right? There's sellers here in this area. People, somebody has to be selling in this area, right? Right, there's sellers in this area and buyers in this area. As the market continues to go higher, who got taken out, the buyers or the sellers? 
the sellers. Awesome. So now what happens? There's sellers in the market again, right? Okay, the buyers come in. Who got taken out first? Sellers. So in an uptrend, the market will continue to take the seller liquidity first. Even though there can be all types of trend line liquidity, you know, consolidation, whatever the case. But in an uptrend, bro, I've learned that they will take south side liquidity over and and over and over again. And they will leave that buy side liquidity for when it's ready to uh, reverse. Right. So as market continues to go up higher, boom, took some more sellers. Now look at how much. So look at market's been con uh, continuing higher, right? Everybody who was selling at those areas are all sad. All right. Everybody who was selling. They lost. Everybody who was selling, they lost. There's no more money. There's no more sellers in that area. But where's all the fresh money? Not, uh, where's all the fresh money at now, guys? If you guys want to annotate and draw my chart, where is all the fresh money at now? That's where all the fresh money is at. So look it. This is where it's important to go ahead and draw up and mark up your chart. Because when we get these change of characters and market starting to head down now, guys, you know why they're coming down. There's fresh money. So market, boom, takes out this buyer. Boom, takes out this buyer. Now we're what? We're downtrending. Boom, boom. So now everybody who was buying here, they just got clapped. They're sad. They're sad. They're sad. And look, someone sold there. Someone sold there. Someone sold there. Someone sold there. Someone bought here. Someone bought here. Someone bought here. So in a downtrend, guys, when the market is heading down, who's getting, who is getting taken out? The sellers or the buyers? When the market is in a downtrend, who is getting taken out? Buyers or sellers? In a downtrend, the buyers are way more likely to get knocked out. Way more likely. Right? So again, everybody who was trying to buy, those guys had all their SL hit. Stop loss has been hit, right? Now look, where is all the fresh money at? When market wants to start reversing, where's all that fresh money? Boom. Awesome. Let's go ahead and target all that fresh money. All that fresh money. So everybody who was selling in these areas oops all these guys got taken out does that make sense guys so don't don't always think oh shoot where are we at don't always think bro because look what is this right here this is a perfect example um austin what is this right here bro Would you, what would you consider this right here, uh, Austin? Anybody. Anybody can answer. Equal lows, right? That's liquidity. Trend line liquidity, just like that. But look, we didn't take it out to go higher. We didn't shift it to go higher. We would like it to, but it doesn't always happen like that. That's where we get the inverted head and shoulder, right? Trend line, trend line, trend line, head, boom. But sometimes 
it'll leave that liquidity. It'll leave that. And then what kind of buy setup do we have now? Boom. Starting point. Buy. So in this uptrend right here, guys. In this uptrend. There was sellers and there was buyers. Right? Everybody who was buying in this area. There was a lot of people buying in this area and then a lot of people selling in this area. And then uptrend. Who got taken out first? The buyers or the sellers? The sellers did. Even though we would like the buyers to get swept first. And, you know, that's what smart money, you know, puts in our brain. But it doesn't always do that. And that's what I had to get my, wrap my head around too. Right? And again, look at what happened. We have sellers. 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 We have buyers. 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 And an uptrend. And this is, guys, that's why it's so important that we understand starting points and head and shoulders and structure. This is why I drill the, sim the simplicity of levels. Because when you understand what you're looking for, it makes it so much easier. In an uptrend, we had people selling, buying, selling, buying, selling, buying, selling, buying. And then in an uptrend, what happened? Boom. The sellers get taken out. And where's all the fresh money at? Sellers. Are the, sorry, buyers, buyers, all the fresh money is still down here. So whenever that does want to happen, right? Whenever that reversal does want to happen, there's going to be a lot of fresh money to pick up. Does that make sense, guys? Big drop. Does that make sense? You know, um, that's one thing that I had to wrap my head around too, is just because there's liquidity, it doesn't always have to sweep it. And that's why we have to know the head and shoulder and the starting point, because there's going to be two types of entries, you know? Um, let's see what Austin got. Uh, oh, you an OG with the breakout finder, with the breakout finder of um, indicator. But yeah, this is pretty much what we're looking at right here. Um, starting point, entry, yep. Let's go ahead and pull it up on levels, and we'll go ahead and end the, end the call out. What time frame was that, Austin? BTC USD. Oh, same thing. Look at this, guys. Look at this. Look at this. What happened? What happened here? Trust me, I would love for this market to be swept, right? I would love for it to be swept and then continue going because that gives me a better discounted price. Look, we have sellers, sellers, buyers. Market looks like Bitcoin looks like it's starting to have this little push, right? Look at this. Who got taken out first in this little uptrend? Those sellers did. Now, levels are saying, yo, look, look what happened. We have a break of structure to the upside. Rally breakout. Rally of three candles. Right? We have a rally of three candles. We have a blue arrow. Press the, blue, the bulls, the blue box. That's your entry. Where's your stop loss? Underneath this wick. Your entry, stop loss. Whether you hit the 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 fifty percent of that entry or the first touch, minimum one to three risk to award. Super, uh, that's solid, Austin. That's that's good work, bro. That's good work. Yes, sir. Your markup is valid, for sure. It is, for sure. It is. Now, this is the thing too, bro. You never have to be the first one in, right? So as the market dropping back down. Let's mark it up, right? Let's mark up all the structure. As the market's dropping back down, let's just mark it up because as soon as we get this change of character to the upside, bro, it's game time. We could really start throwing some lots down. Boom. Break a structure, change of character. Now, once it comes back into this area, we could really start throwing some lots and shift that thing back up. Does that make sense, bro? Yes, but I do have one question. So, like, we don't need to see the market close below that red line, like the lower wick, and then reach. Right 
Yeah, because if we close below that, does that mean we're now in a downtrend? Yeah, if we close below, okay, let's let's start looking to shift the market down. Okay, so that's my. I think that's my biggest issue is like what I guess exactly is the point of the retest and then get in because like I think I'm waiting for it to go too low if that makes sense. Mm, okay, so you're saying when the market is dropping down, yeah. You're you're waiting for it to come way down here. Yeah, yeah. Think, for your buys. Yeah, I think that was my biggest thing. I don't know why. I just okay. Uh, it, it don't sense. get me wrong. Sometimes that'll happen, right? Some like the market's not always going to respect our zones one hundred percent. Um, but no, yeah. When, when the market is in this zone, bro, when we're able to see our zone, um, we want to go ahead. When the market's inside this range, that's your buy range. So you have complete freedom to take buys within this range. You just as long as you know where your stop loss is, and or when you're one to three, you're good to go. As soon as the market is in your buy zone, bro, you are good to go. Um, now as soon as we get this switch and the market is starting to, you know, from this this slight little downtrend, and we change character, we're ready to start throwing down some more trades, or a trade with a bigger lot, you know. Because usually on the first test trade or the first touch, I like to test trade this my areas always. I'm a big fan of test trading. So I will go with the lower lot, a super under leveraged lot, right? Now, as soon as I get something like this, I am now throwing down a full percent on this trade. But you're waiting for the bigger lot to drop down in, in smaller time frames to see the retest off that like first touch line or correct. Correct. Re you want to see the first touch line. Okay. Correct. Yeah. So it's, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. You got it, bro. So as soon as it comes within this zone, I'm looking for that change of character. Now it could be on the five minute, the 15, the hour, whatever time frame that you feel comfortable with waiting on. That's, the, that's the time frame you take your trade on. Does that make sense? Yes. I, mean, I, did, I did have a question. So like, obviously, is it the, same like obviously structure stays the same across each time frame but are you also looking to um like is it different between swing trading and position trading or is it the same and it's the same bro my and it's okay it might it's the same bro we could think of this as the daily right yeah or the four hour daily similar type of structure so if you're looking at four hour slash daily structure you're already thinking swing type of place yeah Right now, as soon as we get into this next trade, now we're into more positions. So now we're position trading. We're now we're stacking positions, right? Yeah. So, yeah, and this can go. Oh, sure, I wanted to make sure of. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're good. Um, any questions, guys? Before we get off. Nice, 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 nice. Um. I thought this call was pretty fire. Actually, um, I like when you guys ask questions. It helps me get to know where you guys are. Because, um, again, I feel like I'm breaking things down fairly simple. Um, but I'm at a whole different level than you guys. So a lot of you guys are new and beginning or intermediate. And I've been here for going on three years now, you know. So I can feel like I break things down easy. And then in your head, I'm like, bro, this is calculus times two, my boy. You know, so, again, always ask questions. Um, don't be afraid to um you raise your hand. You guys hear people asking questions, unmuting, um, getting their questions answered, taking advantage of the call. Make sure you guys take advantage of the call as well. This space, this call, um, these calls are meant for you guys to get better, right? So take advantage of that, you know. Um, none of the educators within Powerhouse will trip on you guys ever asking questions. Um, we want you guys to ask questions so we can help you and you know, cut that learning curve for you guys. Um, but with that being said, guys um i hope you guys have a great weekend right I, I hope you guys back test send in some charts ask for some help you know what i'm saying and i will see you guys on monday peace out everybody thank you for spending time with me today on this lovely uh friday evening